so we'll be starting now okay so today is our software engineering class right can you all hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am so first of all i'm going to present in front of you the pdf document now yes hmm Can you all see this PDF? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, in our last yes. class, okay. Okay. So today's topic is your design, right? Uh, you all must be remembering your SDLC, which has got the various phases or the five phases. The first phase was your requirement analysis phase, which we have covered in the last lecture and in today today's session we are going to be moving on to the next phase of the sdlc which is your design phase fine let the people join i think most of you have joined right okay so this is the software designing unit number 3 and this is the structure of this unit we are going to cover the introduction part the objectives the data design what is the architectural design then we are going to discuss about the modular design interfaces and the design of the human computer interface and the user experience design or the ux design after that we are going to go for the designing for the mobility and the patterns for the design okay so all these are the topics that we are going to cover today at least these topics if we will be able to complete this unit before the time completed then we are going to move to the next unit which is related to the quality of the software right so before entering into the designing phase you you means the uh, developer of the software or the software development company needs to complete the requirement analysis phase so what was the output of your requirement analysis phase can any one of you tell me the output of it is the collected information and gathered the requirement from the first phase which yeah. is requirement then it is passed to the analysis right so we gave a specific name to the output of the requirement analysis phase there is a document and we call it as the srs document okay we have discussed it, it earlier also so srs document was what it was your software requirement specification document now we all remember yes ma'am yes ma'am hmm. okay so the output of your first phase which was the requirement analysis phase now is going to act as the input for your designing phase so we'll be starting with the designing phase when the developing team enters into this phase then what the developing team consist of or what the developing team has the developing team has the software requirement specification men mentioning all the possible requirements of the client right so moving on to the designing phase when the team has got all the requirements and everything now the next target of the team is to build or develop the blueprint for designing the software next requirement is what now just next requirement is to develop or create a blueprint for designing of your software like i have given you the example also uh, for example before constructing any house what we do we just try to make the map of the house right and what that map consist of that map consist of all the outlinings of the interiors and the exterior of your house right so it has got everything which is going to be built inside that house it is going to have a main door then there is going to be a balcony and then there is going to be the rooms and the washrooms and the kitchens and living room and all that stuff fine so what that blueprint is used for what that map is used for that map is basically is taken as the foundation for actually constructing your house for actually building your house 
similarly before actually coding your software or before actually doing the programming what is the requirement there is a requirement of a blueprint there is a requirement of a design document right so this is how the software designing is very very important because software designing is also very much closely related to the quality of your software so if the design is going to be a good design then the quality of the software can be thought of as a the software can be thought of as a good quality software fine so what is the basically the goal of your software design the goal is basically to develop a model or to develop a blueprint and then by taking that blueprint as a standard do the coding of your soft software or do the programming of your software which is the next phase in our software development life cycle so in this entire unit we are going to understand about the different types of the designing models plus what is the importance of these models why we need these models and how these models can be constructed what are all the important things that needs to be considered while designing the models right earlier what used to happen it used to happen that after the requirement analysis uh, by the client the company used to jump on to the coding part there was no designing part in the earlier time period or when, when we were developing the software in the earlier phases right but what used to be felt it used to be felt that when we directly jump on to the coding part then the software is the software is built but it it is not a very reliable software right it in it might uh, needs a lot of amount of the time in order to be developed plus even after the developing the software has a lot of bugs lot of errors and the maintenance part of the software is also not very well so then it has been decided that before jumping on to the coding part let's just draw a rough blueprint of all the parts of the software all the functioning of the software how the data is going to flow from one part to the another part or how the information is going to be traveled what are all the users of the softwares and so on so all these things are now just uh, put it into a design model and then that design model is being used for the coding purpose right so the objectives of the unit we have like covered now we are going to go to the first thing or the data design what is this data designing data designing includes the designing of your data architectural designing of the data designing of the cohesive and the loosely coupled module designing of your interface and what are the good tips for the for designing the good interface and the design of your human interface so all these five points written over here we are going to discuss all the points one by one and after that for you the work is just to go and revise when the lecture or when the session is going to be completed then just just pay at least 15 20 minutes in order to at least go and read all the lines which is written into this document because it is very uh, well explained there are certain places where it is not not like uh, matching the uh you know requirements otherwise it is very well explained right so first of all we are going to understand the definition of your software design process or what is the software designing process so the software designing is basically the process of applying various software engineering techniques for doing what why we are applying the software engineering techniques we are applying them in order to develop a model that is going to define your software system and also provides the sufficient details for actual realization of the software so there are basically if we just divide or break this definition the points which we need to remember is that software designing is what software designing is a process for doing what in order to develop a model and that model is going to do what that model is basically going to define your entire software system and it is also going to provide all the details for the actually realizing or actually implementing your software what is this actual realization of the software it means actually implementing your software or before jumping on to the coding part how we are going to just imagine our software imagine also and then converting our imagination into a model is basically included into the software designing process the target or the major goal of your software designing is 
to translate your user requirements into an implementable program overall overall target of any software development is to just develop the software to just most important phase is your coding phase actually that is why we say that what the designing phase is doing the designing phase is basically converting your requirements into the implementable program into the programs which is actually your software right so all these blocks which you are seeing into this figure what it consists of or what it is depicting it is basically the process of your software designing how it works yeah, the user requirements are available to the developing team right from where these user requirements has come these user requirements has come from your requirement analysis phase right then there is going to be an information model and the information model is going through a system designing and it is going to get translated into the data designing and then data designing goes to another phase which is your coding phase and the functional model and the require requirement model are translated into your procedural design or the architectural design so these are the two important things which happens during the process of your software designing like the information model is translated to the data design model and the functional model and the behavior model are translated into your procedural design or the architectural design now what all these terms are mean what what are, what is the meaning of all these terms we are going to learn it and we are even going to see it in our uh, coming session right the moment we are proceeding further into this session right i have highlighted several points let us just read all these points so keeping in view of the importance of the of the design it should be given the due weightage before rushing to the coding of the software i have explained this point already to you all that before jumping onto the coding of the software it is always very very important to draw the design of your software right i have also explained this point that software quality and the software design process they are very 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 highly interrelated they depends on to each other right as much as the design of the software as much as the good quality of of the software design will be it is directly proportional to the quality of the software right now the followings are some of the fundamentals of your design means when we are just uh jumped into the design phase then these are all the fundamentals that we have to keep in our mind before actually designing your software right so first fundamental is what there should be a, the design should follow a hierarchical organization right we'll we'll just see it there should be a hierarchy that is going from top to bottom or going from bottom to top any kind of the hierarchical org organization should be followed by the design of your software then it should be a modular architecture we always folk after experimenting through each and every kind of the models we have basically felt that the modular approach is the best approach so it is always highly demandable to break your entire system or to break your problems into the several modules and then work on to those modules right so second is the modular approach needs to be followed third point is designing leading to the interface that facilitate the interaction with your external environment right so during the time of designing there is always also the designing of your interface like how your software is going to interact with your user so that interface designing is also needs to be taken into consideration next step is step wise refinement to more detailed design which provides the necessary details for the developer of the code and the modularity is always always encouraged in order to facilitate the parallel development so what these two points are saying these two points are saying that step wise refinement needs to be there we start from a very broader view of your entire software and on moving from one step to another in the designing phase what we do we kept on refining all the all the broader view to the narrower view means in the starting we just mention all the broader elements of that particular software and after moving from one step to another we just kept on going into the details of each and every portion of the, of your software so that is the step wise refinement refinement that should be done after that the modularity is always encouraged and one of the important 
advantage of uh, of using the modular approach is that it facilitate the parallel development right parallelly the team can have the various various modules and they can work simultaneously or the parallelly so it also saves a lot of time and effort of the entire team and it is uh, it also like saves the team to come under the pressure like if there is a team of the 10 people or the 15 people then they only those people have to develop the software then it is like modularity just divided the entire pressure onto the different different teams so that is the basically the advantage right now we are going to discuss about the first of the design which is my data design just before discussing about this data design let us just see the technical aspects of the design or the types of the design we have to see what is the data design then we are going to study about the architectural design then after that we are going to discuss what is modular design and then the human computer interface design just read all these points and as we are going to move further we are going to discuss about all these different types of design right so the first is my data design so before discussing about uh, what is data design let us just understand what is data so data is basically describes the real world information resource data is basically what data is basically consists of a lot of information from the real world and which is very very important for your application now if there could be any kind of the data for example there could be the data which consists of the information about the customers it there could be the data which consists of the information about the people and there could also be the data that have the student records for example there could be the data which includes all the information of the student studying in a particular college or studying into a particular university right so this is called as the data just imagine uh, data is like uh, data is like for example we are going to take a uh, student record example right it is going to include the name of all the students studying into the university it is also going to include what is the date of birth of the student how much percentage he or she has got into your 10th and 12th and then after that what is the phone number what is the father name what is the mother name just imagine all these important fields and there are like hundreds and thousands of students studying into a university that entire sheet of the information is called as your data that entire sheet of the information describing the details of your of the student of any university is going to come into the data right so we have uh, discussed or i have explained you about the data now what is the data design the data design is the basically the first and the foremost activity of any system design we have to just see that when we have got the data how we are going to put that data into the different kind of the data structures right we have got the linear data then we are going to make use of a linear data structure we have got the uh, vector kind of the data then we are going to put or make use of the vector data structure into our for our data right so identifying the data in the system design is a very very iterative process and a high level design basically describes to us how the application handles the information resources and as we go into more details we focus on to the entire data and its properties right so before uh, moving further we are going to see the primary objective of your data design the primary objective of your data design is basically to select the logical representation of your data items logical repre representation of your data items means what are all the data structures that are going to be used in order to store your data right so before uh, designing your data design you must understand you must divide your data according to the requirement of the data structure for your data right plus if you have uh, if you have like typically uh, draw draw the data design then what it should include it should include the name of your data item then it should also have the general description of the data item then the what are all the characteristic of the data item ownership of the data item and the logical events processes and the relationship everything about that particular data needs to be mentioned right it is not like that you have just make use of the data structures and then you are like done no you have to 
mention all the properties of that data or of that data item like name of the data item general description means what this data is all about then what is the characteristic of this data item then what is the ownership of this, of this data item and then what are all the events processes and the relationship that which is existing into that particular data item what kind of the relationship it has with another data item what are all the process that this data is going to go through and what are all the logical events that this data is going to be attended right so this comes under your data designing data designing in the data designing we just mainly focuses on to the data part of any software obviously if we are developing a software that software is going to focus on to the or that software is going to deal with the data right so first what we do we just think about that data and we try to develop a model which is going to be a data design model and what it includes it just includes all the description of the data the kind of the data structure that your data is using plus all the technical details of the particular data item so that comes under your software design data design model right so in this part i've explained you kind of the data structure which is necessary for example if you have a data in the form of the month then what kind of the data structure you can use you can make use of the string kind of the data structure but if the months in year means a list of the months are there from january to, to december then in spite of using the string separately what we are going to make use of we are going to make use of the array data structure right as these are sequenced data for any sequence or the contigu contiguous data items what we make use of we make use of the array data structure and there are various other kind of the data structure for example for the non contiguous memory location we can make use of the linked list then we have the trees we have various another hierarchical type of the data structure uh, this part is like data structure part is like if you know the kind of the data structures or types of the data structures that are present then it is like then you can decide according to your data or the kind of the data uh, you can decide about your data structure right so this part explains that after that we are going to go to our just see this diagram again we have discussed about the data design now we are going to go to our architectural design so what comes under the architectural design this is just see this uh, diagram or the figure and then we are going to study about this architectural design so what it is saying it is saying that we have got a problem and this problem has got a solution but what we have done we have broken that solution into various various parts like this is solution one this is solution two this this is solution three this is solution four this is five and this is six now these solutions are put into a model or put into an architecture which looks like this what the first block is representing to you the first block is representing you the problem part now this problem part has been divided into the three solutions but first of all see the numbering of the solutions it has basically we will start with the solution one part solution two part and the solution five part now solution two part is going to be related with your solution three and solution four and the solution three module or the part or the function is going to be related to your solution six so the major objective of your architectural design is to develop a model as you all can see this is a model of your software architecture which is just going to describe the overall organization of your program so the overall organization for example all these things are representing you the solutions how these are going to be connected with each other is represented into your architectural model right so we can see it from here that the problem and the solutions how those solutions are connected with each other this entire model is called as your software architectural model right now i have explained you this architectural design defines the organization of your program components right it does not provide the details of each component and its implementation it is a very very important line what it is doing the architectural model just defines the organization of your program component means this is the for, uh, program component means 
components are like always we are talking about the modules module means dividing the entire program into the different different parts the software we are not just developing a single program for the entire software what we have done we have just divided our entire software solution into the different different components and these components are represented into your architectural design what is the important characteristic of this architectural design the important characteristic of this architectural design is that it just tell you about the component components and it is not going to tell you about the details of all these components what is happening inside these components the architectural design is not concerned with that. It is just concerned with the different components and their implementations which are present into this model, right? What is happening in what is the details of all these components? What is happening inside these components? Architectural model is not going to be concerned about that, right? Now, we can see this example. There is this architectural model of the financial accounting system. So what is the name of this uh, model? This model is all about the financial accounting management system and it has got the various modules. The first module is your accounts receivable system. Second is your fixed asset management system. Third is your debtors details or the debtors module. So this is how the entire financial accounting management system is divided into the three modules. The first one is discussing about your accounts receivable system. And the second one is discussing about your fixed asset management system. And the third is your debtors or there could be many more modules if required. Right. So the major objective is to control the relationship between these modules. And one module may control another module or may be controlled by another module. There are two things into this model. Either we are just going to say that this S this S3 is either controlled by S2, right? Or S3 is controlling module S6. So the, these two important lines are there. What? One module either can control the another module or it can be controlled by another module because module is connected to both the parts. It is connected to another module which is present uh, at the top of the hierarchy and it is also connected with the another module which is present at the bottom of the hierarchy right now we have two important terms fan in and fan out in the case of the architectural model what i'm saying i am saying these two terms just read it from here fan in and fan out right so fan in means the number of incoming edges to a particular component and fan out means the number of outgoing edges to the particular component what i'm saying i'm I am saying that fan in means this is the component. This is the module S0, right? How many edges are coming to this S0 is the fan in of the S0. How many edges are coming to this? S1 is coming to S0, S2 is coming to S0, and S5 is coming to S0, right? So the number of components that are controlled by the mod the number of components which controls a said component is called as a fan in. So that this is the fan in. How we are going to read it? S not controls what? S not controls S1, S not control S2, and S not control S5. So fan in would be. Sorry, I think I explained. I'm going to read it again. Fan in basically the number of incoming edges to a component. S0 is there. There are no incoming edges to S0. There are just the outgoing edges to the S0. They have reversed the diagram. That is why there is a confusion. And the fan out is S2 is there. One edge is going to S1 and one edge is going to S5. So the fan out has is 2 and the fan in is 3. Right. So this is what is being explained into your architectural model. This is how it looks like. It has got the several levels. It has got the depth. It has got the width. And then it has got two more important terms, which is called as your fan in and fan out. Now I have uh, again, you make use of two important terms, the depth and the width. What is the depth? The number of level of components in the structure is called as the depth. Like this is the structure. The number of levels means this is level one, level two, level three, level four. So what will be the depth? The depth of this architect architecture model will be four. What will be the width? How many components are there in a particular level that will be called as the width? For example, if I'm talking about this level, which is level two, it has got one, two and three components. So width of this level will be three. 
डेप्थ ऑफ द एंटायर मॉडल विल बी वन टू थ्री फोर राइट अंडरस्टूड वट आई एम सेंग डेफ मीन्स जस्ट काउंटिंग ऑल दीज लेवल्स दिस इज लेवल वन दिस इज लेवल टू दिस इज लेवल थ्री एंड दिस इज लेवल फोर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज योर डेप्थ एंड विथ दिस जस्ट टेक एनी ऑफ द लेवल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस लेवल सो हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स आर प्रेजेंट इन टू दिस लेवल इज एक्सप्लेनिंग योर वेट सो हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स आर देर इन दिस लेवल हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स आर देर two elements so two will be the width of this level three will be the width of this level one will be the width of this level so these are the explanation of the two important terms which are like the depth and the width of any model right then after that moving on to this is again a typical architecture of any system it just depends on to the modules of any of the model how many modules it has and what is the breakage of the entire system and then how they are connected with each other it's not like that ki this is any uh, standard architecture or this is the standard that needs to be followed it's not like that it's just an example of an architecture of any of the system which could look like this your system your modules and the architecture of those modules can look different also but this is the hierarchy from top to bottom which is generally being followed right now this was everything about your architectural design we have discussed about what this kind of the model includes then after that how the problem is being divided into the various solution and how those solutions are then uh, transformed into a architecture model it depends on to their on to their connectivity on which level they are existing then after that we have taken the example of the financial accounting management system then after that we have discussed about the depth what is the depth of the architectural model what is the width of the architectural model and we have also discussed about the terms fan in and the fan out so these are the important terms or the imp important points that you all need to know about the architectural design of any software designing model then after that we are going to move on to the next type which is our modular design now we are going to again go back to this and we have seen that we have covered the data designing part we have covered the architectural designing part and now we have come on to our modular designing part and after this we are going to go to our human computer interface designing so let's just start studying about our modular designing right you all uh, must have understood what is a module can i expect that that we all know what is a module yes okay so what it is it's small component of a big component a big big system a big unit right absolutely true so modules are basically the smaller components of the entire system right we have br broken the entire system into the different different parts and these different different parts are called as our modules now what are the important terms that we that we need terms or the properties that we need to know about the modules what are those that they can be manageable and they should be maintainable two important terms are the module needs to be easily manageable and it should be easily maintainable so before moving on to this part we also have to study about this particular line which says that the software can be divided into relatively first term is independent second term is named then addressable component which is called as your module so these four terms or the three terms that we have used just describe the properties of of any of the module how that module should be that module should be independent that module should have a name and that module should have an address so when any component has got all these three properties then we say that that particular component is a module it is independent it is not depending for its functional to functionality to onto any not onto anything then the module has got its name and then it has also got its address right where it is located locating then the another attribute or the property is that it is manageable and it it makes the software product as the manageable and the maintainable what is the advantage of making use of the module is that it makes your software product as 
easily manageable and then after that when we reaches on to the maintenance phase it helps into the maintenance of that particular software also right easily manageable means just imagine uh, the entire problem when we have broken the problem into different parts now it has become easier for us to manage that problem to handle that problem to solve that problem right maintainable means for example the software is being delivered to the customer now the software is into the maintenance phase now what has been found now in spite of maintaining the entire software again, again and again what the team is going to do it is just going to maintain or it is just going to do the required updation into the particular module only it is just going to go from it is just going to consider the module level maintainability of the software right that we are going to study afterwards right now dividing the software into modules have helped the software developer to work on independent modules that can be later we just integrate them and the final product is there i have described all these points to you now this important line is also there what is another advantage of module the another advantage of module is that it encourages the parallel development effort therefore it saves the time and the cost modules are there team is divided modules are divided one module given to a one team another module given to another team obviously it is going to reduce the time because entire problem if a single team is going to work on to the entire problem it is going to take a lot of amount of the time it is going to cost us more cost us more so when everything is divided then both the two important factors that is the time and the cost are always saved it has been observed it has been analyzed it has been seen by the various software developing company that is why these kind of the approaches are being implemented that is why the designing of part of any software comes into play otherwise you just have the requirement analysis and just jump on to jump on to the coding phase the developing team or any software company has seen the advantages of making use of the designing phase that is why it has been incorporated as one of the phases into your software development life cycle right now we are going to study about uh, i think okay these two important terms coupling and the cohesion uh, okay there are there are two very important terms right and the types of these two important terms they both are very very important the first is the cohesion and the second one is our coupling so what is coupling coupling is basically the measure of the functional strength of the software module what we understood by that this is the degree of interaction between the statements in a module highly cohesive system requires little interaction with external module cohesion means now just imagine module wise as we are studying the modular design right now just do not imagine about the entire software just imagine about a single module what cohesion indicates cohesion means the capacity or the ability of the module to be just fulfilled into in into in itself means there is no dependency of that module on to the another module right it is highly it does not have any requirement of interacting with the external module then that kind of the property is called as your cohesion right means it is self sufficient it does doesn't means the degree of the interaction between the another statement into a module it is just going to interact with all the lines of the codes written into return to implement it it's just going to be fulfilled or it's just going to be satisfied by its own functioning by its own statement that is a property which is called as the cohesion and it is always uh, demanded that the modules should be highly cohesive it should have the least amount of the dependency on to any another module right it is very highly self sufficient in its functioning which is called as the cohesion and we always demand that the cohesion should be high in any of the module it is inter it is intra related to itself it is it is not uh, required to be inter related with any another module it is just intra dependent it's not interdependent right so that property is called as the cohesion next property is your coupling coupling means when there is a dependency of the module 
on to the another module or on to the fellow module then that property is called as your coupling it is also written over here that what is coupling coupling is a measure of the interdependence between the modules or among the modules right when functioning of one module depends on to the another module that comes into the coupling that is why we have made use of the term coupling right and what is always desirable always desirable is to have the less amount of the coupling as much as less amount of the dependency we are going to we means the module is going to have on to another module that is being always desirable but in the case of the coupling what is happening there is a interrelationship among coupling right now the important line is you should never get confused among the cohesion and the coupling cohesion is cohesion coupling is coupling coupling means to just depending on to the another module cohesion is there is no need of another module i am self sufficient that is cohesion right now what is desirable highly cohesive modules are always desirable and highly coupled modules are undesirable highly cohesive means means highly not depending on to anything is always desirable highly coupled means highly dependent on the another module is always undesirable desirable is highly cohesive undesirable is highly coupled modules right so it is also being represented by making use of this diagram this is low cohesion this is high cohesion low cohesion is undesirable high cohesion is desirable before going on to the coupling part we are just going to discuss about what are all the types of cohesion we have discussed about this cohesion part that there is a cohesion or the cohesiveness cohesiveness measures the functional relationship of the elements in a module now what we are going to see we are going to see the types of the cohesion that is being existing and then after that we are going to see the types of the coupling which is existing so for that we are going to switch on to the another word document which is going to explain it in a better way just a second just explain me if you are able to see that can you see this word document yes ma'am yes sir okay on which types of coupling is written yes ma'am it is visible okay okay so first we have discussed about the cohesion so we are going to discuss about the types of cohesion only right so best type of the cohesion is your function cohesion these are all the types of cohesion first of all we have got the functional cohesion we have got the sequential cohesion we have got the communication cohesion procedural cohesion temporal cohesion logical cohesion and the coincidental cohesion so the lowest cohesion is being provided by the coincidental cohesion and the highest is functional cohesion and from moving uh from this coincidental cohesion to the functional cohesion all these have the higher degree of the cohesion so the, as the as on to the lowest level the coincidental cohesion is coming right so we are going to study about the functional cohesion what the functional cohesion is stating it is stating that every essential element for a single computation is contained into the component only functional cohesion means whatever the function is required right whatever the task is required it is present into your module only that is your functional cohesion right then after that sequential cohesion sequential cohesion means an element outputs some data that becomes the input for another element right anyone else is there just a second so we are going to see this just a second uh, have you understood about the functional cohesion it's easy i think Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am, we hear. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, basically, na, in order to understand all these cohesion, you just have to remember the names of the cohesion, and then the names are chosen like that. They're uh, self-explanatory. They're explaining by themselves what will be the meaning of that particular cohesion. So, when we talk about the functional cohesion, it means that whatever the function is being required. to any particular 
uh, module that function is present inside that module only that which is called as your functional equation understood then the sequential equation sequential equation means if there is a uh, output that is being generated by any of the part of the module then it is going to act as the input for the another part of that module right so it is also present inside your uh, module only just important thing is sequential is output of one element is going to act as the input for the another element that is the data flow between the different parts of the module when this kind of the cohesion occurs it is it is called as your sequential cohesion third is your communication cohesion when the two elements operate on the same input data or contribute towards the same output data for example update records in the database and send it to the printer when there is a requirement of the two elements then they are just exchanging the information with one another and those two elements are present into the same module it's not like that for another element you have to jump on to another module no when communication is required communication is happening between the two data elements one is generating the input another is contributing towards the same output data then that is called as your communication cohesion i'll share this word document with you all so that you can read all the points thoroughly right then we have the procedural cohesion what procedural cohesion includes it includes the elements of the elements of the procedural cohesion ensure the order of the execution actions are still weakly connected and unlikely to be reusable for example calculate the student gpa print the student record calculate the cumulative gpa and print the cumulative gpa it's when all these points are written they are just uh, discussing about the they are just discussing about the uh, different parts of a program only they are not like different different modules they are just a single module procedural cohesion means just follow a different set of steps when it is being required these sets of steps are uh, cohesively present into a module only that comes under your procedural cohesion in the temporal cohesion the elements are related by their timing involved means there is the timing of the data which is being set and these timings are basically connected with each other then that type of the cohesion is called as your temporal cohesion right then we have the logical and the coincidental cohesion logical cohesion is basically when the elements are logically related and are not functionally related for example a component reads input from the tape disk and network all the codes for these functions is in the same component operations are related but the functions are significantly different logical cohesion means when the operation of any element is related to each other but the functioning are different they have the different kind of the function or they have the different type of the task which they perform right then that kind of the cohesion is called as your logical cohesion after that we are going to move on to the next type of the cohesion which is your coincidental cohesion so what comes under the coincidental cohesion the elements are not related or they are unrelated the elements have no conceptual relationship another than the location in the source code so when the module has certain kind of the elements which are not related with each other they are coincidentally present and if they needs to be connected with each other coincidentally only then they can connect but for now for the present thing these elements are not related with each other then that kind of the cohesion is called as a coincidental cohesion so all these types of cohesion it is very very important to know about them and just to just to knowing about them is not sufficient you must know about this hierarchy also what which type of the cohesion is providing you the highest degree of the cohesion and which type of the cohesion is providing you the lowest degree of the cohesion and in the case of the cohesion we always require the highest the cohesion part right highest the intra dependency of the module then not the inter dependency of the module inter dependency of the module comes into play into your coupling thing we are just going to discuss about the coupling on also so for that we'll just read one or two points into the coupling so this is my coupling part what it is saying in the computer science coupling is defined as the degree to which a module interacts and communicate with another module to perform a certain task right so it the most important term in all these two lines is interaction with the another module right when 
one module is depending on to the another module or when one module is interacting with the another module to perform certain tasks then that type of the uh, then that type of the functioning is called as the coupling that means if one module relies on another the coupling is said to be high right the low levels of coupling means a module does not have to get concerned with the internal details of the another module and interact with the another module only with the suitable interface so we need to understand that we always demand what we always demand the loosely coupled system we always demand the loosely coupled modules and the tightly coupled modules are highly undesirable we just don't want them right now these are all the types of the coupling that we needs to understand we have got the data coupling then we have got the stem coupling coupling we have got the control coupling external coupling co common coupling and the content coupling right data coupling means module interact through the parameters means when the parameter of the module x goes to the module y then that kind of the coupling is called as the data coupling means there is a module x it, it is passing parameter a to the module y right it is passing the parameter which is what which is parameter a to the module y then that kind of the coupling is called as a data coupling data means data coupling means you are passing the data from one module to the another module right stem coupling means when you share the composite data structure now you are not just passing the data you are just passing on to the entire data structure then that type of the coupling is called as the stem coupling stem coupling includes the passing or the sharing of the entire data structure right third is our uh, you have got this control coupling what the control coupling is includes one module control the logical flow of the another module that comes under the control coupling as the name indicates it it is going to control something so what it is controlling it is controlling the logical flow of the another module so just imagine there could be a higher degree of the dependency or the interdependent interdependency among the module that exists that is why all these types are being defined so that so that it is always uh so that all these types of the couplings needs to be ignored there should always be the efforts towards not having the major coupling into our module system just have as much as least amount of the coupling right or the loosely coupled module should be there then the external coupling is there the module shares the external data format right whatever be the external data format it is being shared by the modules among the two modules or the three modules or the number of modules that have the external data format then the common coupling is there common coupling means the global data is there and that global data is being shared among all the modules obviously whenever we do the programming there are certain kind of the global data which exists so when all the module shares that global data it is called as a common coupling content coupling when one module modifies the data of the another module it comes under the content coupling when the modification is being performed by a to the data of the another module via one module is called as a content coupling so there is no need to just cram about all these points you just need to remember the name of the points or name of the types of coupling you just need to remember about the data coupling stem coupling stem coupling control coupling external coupling common coupling and the content coupling and then by their just name only or by just knowing their name only you can just understand what is happening into uh, the type of the coupling and then you just can write it down or mention into your exam so you can read it from here also and uh, if you just do not not able to understand it or if you wanted to understand it more thoroughly thoroughly then you can go to all these points also everything is mentioned into a uh, into uh, in a better detail description is present over here about the types of the coupling fine i'll share this document with you all so that you can refer to this one also if required fine yes ma'am yeah. you just have to tell me but where i am going to share it uh, is there any email id or any group we have a group in our whatsapp ma'am okay. if you are there no i am not a part or the member of that group you any one of you can just connect me to that group so that i can share all these documents or the whatever 
is being is coming into our way to all you people so that you can utilize okay, them okay ma'am share your whatsapp number so we can add mm -hmm. you okay i'll do that i'll just write it into the comments so this is my number fine okay ma'am we will add okay then no, ma any yeah. We have seen this uh, data modular design. So we have two important terms like cohesion and coupling. Right. So what I have understood is this coupling and uh, cohesion is related to each other. Right. The module is connected or sharing the data or necessary information. Right. Exchanging the information. Right. So is there a possibility that there is no cohesion or coupling in a modular design? That is like the best cohesion is always required right without yeah. cohesion the module is not going to work so what we do not want is the coupling part right cohesion is like we always want the highest level of the cohesion coupling part obviously if the modules are going to be there so there is a certain kind of the coupling or the certain kind of the dependency of one module onto the another module is going to be there but what we always desired is to have the less amount of the dependency without any dependency then how the modules are going to be joined at last now obviously there is there is a need of the certain kind of the interactions among the module so coupling also exists that is why these two points are present but yeah, because th the least amount of this coupling is also desirable in the least right. amount of right cohesion is also desirable highest amount of cohesion highest is desirable is, yeah, yeah. And, less no. amount of the coupling is desirable okay. okay okay so these are the points that comes under so we okay they have also represented the coupling and cohesion by making use of this diagram also so these are these structures are showing us the different types of the modules like module one module two module three module four right and they are the highly cohesive modules and the loosely coupled system there is no no dependency there are no interconnections among these modules right this image is depicting that whereas the second image is depicting what there are various modules and they are interconnected with each other at some or the another level and it is also mentioned over here that the low cohesive and the tightly coupled system is undesirable what is desirable this kind of the system is desirable this is desirability it is not like it is happening but we always try to develop this kind of the system not this kind of the system right so uh, any problem till now data design architectural design and the modular design three kinds of the designing we have studied about now we are going to move on to the another design we have come on to the interface design shall we move forward go ahead mom yes yes ma okay okay so we are going to study about the interface design so what is interface design it is like one of the most important part of your software design and it is crucial in a sense that user interact with the system user interaction with the system takes place through various interfaces provided by the software product so before just learning about this what we have to go do we have to just move a little for backward now see think of the days of the text based system where the user had to type the command on the command line interface so we all know about the two types of interfaces the command command line interface and the graphical user interface right so earlier what used to happen earlier the command line interface was existing if the user needs to do something with the computer system then what kind of the interface he or she has he or she has the command line interface means everything needs to be typed in the form of the commands and then that that task is going to be executed so it was very difficult the user has to remember the different types of the command and everything right then after that we moved on to the graphical user interface or we move on to the uh, on to the much better interface which is our graphical user interface which shows us the different types of the menus in the forms of the graphics also and 
बिफोर मूविंग ऑन टू द ग्राफिकल यूजर इंटरफेस वी वी मूव ऑन टू द मेन्यू बेस्ड इंटरफेस एंड इट लुक्स लाइक दिस राइट टू रन द प्रोग्राम मेन्यू बेस्ड मीन्स इट गिव्स ऑलवेज गिव्स अस द ऑप्शन ना वी डोंट हैव टू राइट द कमांड्स लाइक दिस दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ योर कमांड लाइन इंटरफेस राइट रन प्रोग्राम वन डॉट ई एक्सी बैक स्लैश आई इज इक्वल्स टू टू मैसेज इज इक्वल्स टू ऑन सो दीज टाइप इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द यूजर ऑफ द कंप्यूटर टू यूज इट राइट देन the advancement has happened into the technology and a menu based interface has been developed it has also been found like better than the earlier interface now we have moved on to the graphical user interface that has still, got ma'am excuse me you still have to use this uh, menu based in some telecommunication companies like mobile yeah it, yes yes definitely we can so after that we moved on to the graphical user interface the interface that we to which we all are using right now so what are the important advantages of this interface is various informations can be display and allow the user to switch to the different tasks directly from the present screen now of the keyboard shortcuts are there simultaneous operations can be performed and many more so when we discuss about all these important points what we see we see that if we have developed a software system it is very good but for the user or to make your software to work more efficiently it is also very important to put your attention on to the interface part interface is a we can say the middle layer that facilitate the user interaction with the software this interface lies in between the user and your software and the interface basically provides the uh, provides the platform to the user so that the user can interact with your software right so it is very very important to create a very good interface very interactive interface very easy to use interface right it is always desirable for your software to develop an interactive easy to use and a very good interface so that it becomes it becomes easy for the user of that particular software to use the software otherwise if it is difficult for the user of the software to use it now then after some amount of the time he or she is going to lose the interest from that software application so that is why when we just perform the designing part of any software we also focuses on to the interface design part now after that we are going to see that we also focuses on to the human computer interface part we also focuses on to the user experience design part right we also focuses on to the mobility design part so all these things are enough coming we are coming up we are just going to discuss about the interaction of the user with the software right so these are all the important things about the designing interface uh what these are okay the following are the elements of the good interface design so all these are the important points that are being mentioned over here which are basically telling you how the interface should be what are all the important points which which needs to be there i'm just going to read all of them for you so so that it is like we have just read them once i'll just read this point develop the standard for the good interface design and stick to it it is for the developing company the first is goal and the intention of the task must be identified you must know or the developing company must know how the user should interact with your system right so that goal that intention of the task must be identified beforehand only then the important thing about the designing interfaces is all about maintaining the consistency use of consistency means consistency in the use of the consistent color scheme messages and the terminologies you must have seen the various websites right website of various universities or any of the website then you must be if you are focused now you must have seen that there is a particular kind of the color scheme that the particular website is using and it is just revolving around that particular color theme right so all the websites have different different color themes so it is also important to maintain the consistency into your color scheme or the messages or the terminologies or the fonts or how your website is going to look like so everything needs to be taken into consideration then for the third point the developer has to develop the standards for the good interface design and then after developing it is important to stick to all those points only now 
third or the fourth important point is to make use of the icons wherever possible in order to provide the appropriate message like that is why we have moved on to the graphical user interface we are we are not into the menu based interface now so whenever we are just developing any of the interface which is gui based it is always desirable to make use of the icons wherever possible in order to display the appropriate message next is allow the user to undo the current command this helps in undoing the mistake committed by the user this is another important point which is uh, just describing about the un importance of the undo right you always must have the uh control z and control y into your system so all these types of the things should be always present now provide the context sensitive help to guide the user then make use of the proper navigational scheme in order to uh, facilitate the easy navigation within the application now discuss with the current user to improve the interface think from the perspective of the user then the text appearing on the screen are primary source of information exchange between the user and the system avoid making use of the abbreviation these are simple points i think if i'm reading it you are understanding it or should i explain it more it is easy ma'am it's easy no right wherever you feel like the problem just tell me now navigation within the screen is very important and is especially useful for the data entry screen where keyboards is used intensively to input the data so navigation should always is very very important if we are just just imagine uh, we are accessing the website of a university right now we know that the academics portion of that particular website is going to have the details of all the departments that that is existing into the university right home is going to have the uh, origin of the university what is the goal of the university what is the intention of the university research portion is going to have all the details of the research so what what all these points are uh, signifying all these points are signifying that it is very easy to navigate or it is ve very easy to go to the information which is required by the user onto that website so navigation part is always very very important then use of the color should be of secondary importance it may be kept in mind about the user accessing application in a monochrome screen your screen should not look like a multi colored screen it is always desirable to have the less colors on to your screen right then expect the user to make the mistake and provide appropriate measure to handle such errors through proper interface design right then grouping of the data element is very important group related data items accordingly justify the data items avoid the high density screen layout make sure an accidental 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 double click instead of a single click may does something unexpected right provide the file browser provide the keyboard shortcuts provide online manual to help user in, in operating the software allow always allow a way out warns user about the critical risk like deletion of the file updation of the file updating of the crit critical information programmers are not always good interface designer take help of the expert professionals who understand the human perception better than the programmers include all the possible features in the application even if the feature is available in the operating system last is second last is word the message carefully in a user understandable manner and develop the navigational procedure prior to developing the user interface whenever we are talking about the interface thing just just try to memorize the important important points right so one of the most important point is your navigation part right the navigation should be very good into your interface means it is always it should be always easier for the user of that interface to navigate from one item to the another item he shouldn't be like in search of the information where the, where that particular thing is locating it should be very easily nav navigatable right then various kind of the shortcut keys should be provided after that the color scheme color theme should be monochrome then after that there should be a color sensitivity that needs to be followed then after that navig interface is all about representing your entire thing representing your entire software that is basically the uh, means the user is not concerned with the coding part right user is not going to see what is happening at the back end what the user is going to see the user is going to see your interface how your website how your software looks like right so all these things are important icons are important and 
always just provide the facility of undoing any mistake right so all these important things needs to be taken into consideration when consideration whenever we are talking about the developing of any of the interface design now we are going to see about the types of the interface design the first is my design of the human computer interface so human computer interface includes what how the human is interacting with the computer so human is interacting with the computer with the help of a keyboard now a computer mouse is required a touch screen can be required or a program on your window machine that includes a trash can icons of various programs disk drives and the folders so all these important points are saying what they're saying the personal desktop pc that has the following interface for the humans to interact so everything are there they're allowing us to interact with the system then human computer interface it includes all the important points that we have discussed right now so what it is going to have first it has explained about the different types of the personal computer uh, tools which are being provided to us so that we can we can interact with the computer system now we are going to read it from here the overall process of the design leads to the translation of the design models to the user model human computer interface design goal is to discover the most efficient way to design the interfaces for the human interaction and understandable the electronic messages so this is the most important line into this what the hci we say human computer interface and the short form we say it like the hci what it is doing its goal is to discover the most efficient way in by making use of which the humans can interact with with your computer system so the entire branch of the computer science is devoted to this area whose main work is just to design the various kinds of the interfaces which are going to include the designing of the various menus or the types of the menus it is also going to include the types of the icons forms messages dialogues and as well as the displaying of your data so that comes under your under your interface designing right important line is the user friendliness of the program we are using is a result of the interface design the buttons the pull down menus the context sensitive you have seen that the i have underlined these two points you have seen that the yes ma'am okay so this is again the functionality which is being provided to me by this interface of by the interface of this pdf right i can underline it i can just shade it or i can do many another things with that so what is this this is the interface for me right so all these things needs to be taken into consideration the main purpose of designing any interface is to make it as user friendly as possible by making use of any kind of the menus any kind of the icons or the forms or whatever the requirement of any kind of the designing data is there in order to make the interface mostest user friendly is basically the purpose of the human computer interface right now these are some of the principles of the good human human computer interface design which you all must know first is your diversity means okay these are the rules for designing any interface and this is the principle of the good human computer interface design diversity means consider the type of the user frequently use a system the designer must consider the type of the user ranging from novice user knowledgeable but intermittent user and expert frequent user diversity means the user can can fall into any of the category the user can be the novice user means the first time user of your software who doesn't even know he it is also possible that he is using your software as the first time or in his entire life the first software which he is using is your software so that user is going to come under the category of the novice user now if the knowledgeable is also there who has got some knowledge about using the software and then the expert frequent user is also there so whenever you are making an interface that interface should communicate with all the types of the user in the similar manner it should be user friendly for all the types of the it should be constructed such that it is user friendly for all the types of the users so that comes under the diversity means diversity in the users then these are all the rules that should be followed when whenever we are designing a human computer interface right 
consistency is followed enable expert to use the short I have studied about all these points in the interface also right these are all the points we have just given a heading to them and presented them into the human computer interface so consistency we have covered then enable the expert user to make use of the shortcuts then informative feedback procedure should be there error prevention and handling the common errors part should also be there that is the screen design should be such that users are unlikely to make a serious error it should be very very easy means anybody who is just very very naive he can or she can make use of that interface that is basically the overall purpose then allow the reversal of your action undo part should always be present on to your interface like i can give you the example for example if i'm just sharing these part right so this is the functionality which this interface is providing to me i can even unshade it i just press control z right so all these undo or the reversal of the action should be allowed by your interface right reduce the effort of memorization by user now it shouldn't be like that ki if there is a naive user then he has to remember the path or the navigation path that first i am going to click on to this then i am going to then search and then going on to that part of the website or the software then i am going to the next part no it shouldn't be like that it should be very very easy so that it should be so easy that nothing should be memorized by the user he just start clicking and the things just start popping in front of the user so that comes under reducing the effort of the memorization by the user then the next point is the relevance of the information obviously the information present on to the website should be very very relevant relevant or the information displayed should be relevant to the present context of performing any of the task then the size of the screen is also taken into consideration right right now i haven't done the full screen i can do the full screen of this part i can even do the minimization part or the another thing right so all these facilities should be provided whatever the size of the screen or the size of the display user wants he or she can makes his or her uh, whatever the information is being displayed the interface provide this facility of adjusting of the screen size then minimize the data input action wherever possible provide the predefined selectable data inputs right it should be just click the interface should be more on the click click basis in spite of entering into any data right next is help there should always be an option of help which should be present on to the interface so that if there is any user we who doesn't know anything about the interface he can just go to your help guide and read it and then come back to the site and then work according to the help so all these are the 10 important points which are like consistency which basically deals with the color schemes and the looks then after that enable the expert to use the shortcuts then informative feedback should be there then error prevention and handling the common errors should be there allow the reversal of the actions reduce the effort of the memorization by the user and then the relevance of the information should be there screen size adjustable minimize the data input action and help should always be present on to your interface so this is all about the human computer interface then after that another kind of the designing design part comes into play after the interface it is the user experience design or the ux design right we have got these two important points user experience design now just read this example for example there are many kinds of the mobile phones present into the market right but you prefer a certain kind of the mobile phone only why because you like the look of that mobile phone you like the design of that mobile phone you are feeling comfortable in navigating on to that mobile phone so when this kind of the things are being discussed they comes under the user experience design means when the user is using your software when the user is using your particular for example the application or your particular website then how the use what is the experience of the user with that particular product of yours that comes under the ux design so ux design is the base on which all the mentioned things are possible it is always now the emphasis is on to the experience of the user if the user is feeling the product now if the user is feeling the uh, your software then your software is definitely going to work it is never going to 
be the complaint from the client side that he is not able to interact with your software or the feel of the of the of your software is not good so now uh, another kind of the design comes into play which is called as your ux design or the designing of the user experience or the designing of the ux so ux basically focuses on the entire journey of the user with that particular product as the name indicate user experience design what is the experience of the user with your product it comes inside this user experience design and it is always desirable from any of the company which is manufacturing that particular product to develop the product such that it becomes the bestest of the feeling for the user to use your product that is why we what we do we choose among the mobile phones yeah on the basis of the various vectors obviously the internal configuration of the mobile phone is one thing but we also prefer the look or the design of the phone the feeling the comfort that we feel whenever we hold that phone what is the weight of that phone whenever we are trying to interact with the phone is it easy to going to the location where we wanted to go or it is not easy to go on to the location right so all so all these things comes under the user experience design now the next part is designing for the mobility designing for the mobility means nowadays what we are seeing that everybody has got the mobile phone right so whenever we are designing something the it is always taken in, into consideration that our particular software is also deployed deployed onto the mobile device we can see that there are various uh, applications which are working onto our computer or which are working onto our laptop or the desktop similarly they are working onto our mobile phone also we have got the whatsapp onto the mobile we can also access that whatsapp onto our laptop so what is the next uh, point of consideration in the designing we should design our software such that it is deployable onto the mobile device and it is deployable onto the onto the desktop also onto the laptop also so earlier it was not happening because mobiles were like we just have the mobile for making the calls but nowadays we have got these multimedia phone phones on which we are making use of the various applications so what needs to be consideration we should develop something hybrid which runs across the mobile operating system also and which should work across the computer operating system also right so that comes under your designing for the mobility part everything needs to be taken into consideration now it is not like that the designing part is going to focus on to uh, just the working of your particular software into a laptop only or onto a desktop only now it has to be the designing should be such that it can also be deployed onto your mobile phone and it also works similarly onto the mobile phones as it is working onto the de desktop right you can access the uh, ignu website onto your desktop also and onto your mobile phone also how it is possible because the designing part is made such that it is being able to perform in the same manner on to both the devices so it is it comes under the designing for the mobility now there are various patterns for the design now what is a design pattern a design pattern is general repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem in a software design it is a general reusable solution for problems that is occurring commonly into your software design these are all the kinds of the design pattern pattern means means the pattern means something which, which is happening repetitively it is called as the pattern design pattern means if there is a problem and there is a solution then all those general repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem they are comes under the category of the design pattern the following are the different kinds of the pattern we have got the architectural pattern we have got the data patterns means what the architectural pattern is going to consist of the architectural pattern is going to consist of the commonly occurring solutions to the problems which are related to the architecture of the particular design then the data patterns are there then the component patterns are there then the interface design patterns are there and many more other like web app patterns creational patterns and then the structural patterns and the behavioral patterns so by reading this point we have come on to the end of the designing part of the software development life cycle so what all we have discussed today we have discussed about all these important points where they have gone we have discussed about the data designing part 
we have discussed about the architectural designing part we have discussed about the modular design and we have also discussed about the human computer interface design so what you all have to do you all have to just just revise at least once right so whatever the examples whatever the things have been taught today you can remember that and even if you forget something you can always go to the youtube channel of rc dehradun and again check back to the same recording which is being happening today right you all know that now all these recordings are put yeah. to the youtube channels fine then after that we are going to go to the next unit of ours which is going to deal with the quality of the software right so next is our software quality and the software security software quality means what we understood by the quality quality means whatever is being demanded by the client is delivered to the client in the most authentic way means in the most desirable way in the most the in the way in which the client has asked so that comes under your software quality so what is basically software quality assurance is a series of the activities undertaken throughout the software engineering process quality assurance means whenever we are delivering any pro product we obviously assure our customer about the quality of that product right we are going to see what all comes into the quality of any software so the major objective of the software quality assurance process is to produce what obviously a high quality software that meets the requirement of the customer through a process of applying the various procedures and the standard we are going to see the definition of the software quality what is quality quality is defined as that we have delivered the same product to the customer as it is being demanded by the customer right so that is the quality means it is a conformance to the stated and the implied needs of the customer whatever is being stated whatever is being is the thing which is being implied by the customer only that comes under your quality software quality is what that you are delivering a software which is bug free you are delivering a software which is delivered on to the on to the time within the budgets meets the requirement and is always maintainable all these important points comes together and forms the quality of the software or says that if all these points are being fulfilled then your software is of the good quality software what are all the points the first point is the software is bug free it is delivered on to the time on which it is being asked to be delivered then the budget or the overall cost of the software is within the budget only and whatever the requirements being displayed by the customer all those requirements are being met and after the delivery also your software is always what it is always maintainable right these are various attributes or the properties of the quality right you all can see that these are all the attributes of the quality the first is the auditability the auditability means whatever the software is being delivered it should have the ability to being tested against the conformance to standard auditability means we just do the audit in order to see whether the software that is being delivered is following all the standards of the development of the software so it should always be auditable next compatible obviously the software should be compatible with the hardware that are being present then we have the third quality which is our completeness completed me completeness means the degree to which all of the software's required functions and the design constraints are present and they are fully deployed whatever the requirements were there whatever the required functions were there what were the design constraints were there everything are being present into your software consistency means there is a uniformity there is a standardization and the freedom from any kind of the contradiction into your system is the consistency all these things freedom all the all these things means the contradiction among the documents or the part of the system or the component should not exist whether what should exist the uniformity standardization should be present right correctness it is the degree to which a system or the component is free from any of the fault in its specification in its design and implementation obviously the utmost important for the software company is to is to deploy a software which is correct in its nature 
correct in its there shouldn't be any fault into the specifications there shouldn't be any fault into the designing of the software and not even into the implementation part of the software then we have got the feasibility part it should be the degree to which the requirement design or plans for a system or components can be implemented under the existing cons. feasibility means you have developed something it should be workable it should be feasible it should be it shouldn't be like the system is being developed but it is not it cannot be worked because it is not feasible to our existing system so it shouldn't be like that right it should be appropriate to the existing system right that is that comes under the feasibility modularity we all must be knowing the modularity right the degree to which a system or the computer program is composed of the discrete components such that a change to one component has the minimal impact on to the another component that is why what we always expect in the modularity we always expect the cohesion why we always expect the good quality of the co cohesion so that if there is any change made into the if there is any change required into your module it should not impact to another module right there should be the least amount of the impact onto the another component of your software that is why the module should be highly cohesive predictability the degree to which the functionality and the performance of the software are determinable for a specified set of the input you know what is going to happen right that comes under the predictability robustness the system should be strong against any of the stressful environmental condition right that comes under the robustness then the structuredness obviously what is the output of your uh, this designing phase that the output of the designing phase is your system design document so everything should be properly structured before developing actually the software so designing part should be followed in a much serious manner that comes under the structuredness then the testability obviously the before delivering it through which your system is being developed whether it is on to a unit level whether it is on to the alpha level or the beta level or the acceptance level or any of the level then the testing should be it should be like going on continuously in all the phases of the development traceability means it should always be a relationship that can be established between two or more products of the development process if something is happening to the one process then it should be easily traceable understandability the degree to which the meaning of the srs sdd and the code are clear and understand understandable to the reader and the last is your verifiability that is that includes a deg degree to which the srs sdd and the code have been written to facilitate the verification and the testing so this verifiability and the testing part is going to come into the testing unit now what are all the causes of error in any of the software these are all the causes of the error or where the error can come right we are discussing about the software quality means your software should be like error free but where what are the causes of the error first is misinterpretation of the customer's requirement the first phase if you have got you are not able to understand the requirement of the customer very particularly or very briefly or very thoroughly then you are going to then there are very high chances of the errors which are going to come into your software second is incomplete or the erroneous system specification the, whatever the specifications of the systems are there they should be very very complete there shouldn't be incomplete specification of the system now whatever the logic you are going to make use of if that is again wrong it is also it is also very much possible that error is going to come into your software then not following the programming or the software standards it is always desirable that on each and every stage all the standards should be followed after that if the testing is not completed incomplete testing is performed and due to the, due to the certain time constraint the software is being delivered so then again there is a very high chances of the occurrence of the error then after that uh, inaccurate documentation or no documentation you have delivered the software but you haven't given the manuals with that software or the documentation part in the case of the srs or the sdt are not properly done that is also again going to be a cause of the error now 
Next point is deviation from the specification. Whatever is being mentioned to you by the customer, his requirements, everything, all the specifications were there, but you are deviating from them. In spite of availability of the specification, you are not able to work according to those specifications. That is again come under the deviation from the specification. Next is error in the data modeling and the representation. If the data is not modeled properly, data is not represented properly then in that case also the error is going to arise into your software so all these are the different causes of the errors into your software now if the errors are there then there should be certain metrics which are going to measure the quality of your software right there should be certain measurement scales like for example we have got the scale to measure the weights we have got the scale to measure the temperature similarly we have also got the scale or the measurement or the uh, measurement in order to measure the quality of our software, right? The software quality is the set of the characteristics that can be measured in all the phases of the software development. Just read this line again. It is very, very important. It says that you can measure the quality of the software in all the phases. There are so many types of the matrices which are present. First is my defect metrics. Defect metrics means number of design changes required, number of errors in the code, number of bugs during different stages of the testing, reliability metrics, and it also measures the mean time to failure that may be defined as the probability of the failure during a particular interval of the time. This will be discussed in the software reliability part. So reliability metrics we are going to discuss into the software reliability part, but the defect metrics is are first of all count the number of the design changes required, right? then count the number of errors in the code that has occurred, then count the number of bugs during the different stages of the testing and so on. By summing them all up, you're going to have a kind of the matrix which is going to tell you the quality of your software. Next is your maintainability matrix. The maintainability matrix is being achieved by making, by calculating the complexity of your software right complexity is being calculated like this v of g is equals to e minus n plus 2 so before going on to this formula let us just read these lines it says that complexity metrics are used to determine the maintainability of the software just remember this in order to determine the maintainability of the software what you need to calculate you need to calculate the complexity metrics the complexity of the software can be measured from its control flow what is this control flow this is this control flow you have seen the notes a, B, C, D are representing the nodes and these arrows are representing your edges. You can calculate the cyclomatic complexity of the program by using this formula, which is like E minus N plus 2. E is representing the edges. How many edges are there? This is one edge. This is two edge. This is three edge, four and five edges are there. So I'll rep replace the E with five. How many nodes are there? four nodes are there so five minus four plus two the cyclomatic complexity comes out to be three you can see it over here also so the cy cyclomatic complexity has been related to the programming effort maintenance effort and the debugging effort although the cyclomatic complexity measures the program complexity it fails to measure the complexity of a program without the multiple conditions so all these things these matrices these complexity this defect matrix right they are like to measure the quality of the software in the different different phases in order to measure the quality into the maintainability phase you can count the complexity or the cyclomatic complexity of your software right in order in order to measure it into your reliability phase then you can just calculate the defect metrics which includes all these important points then we are going to go to the software quality assurance part and we are going to just finish this session with this part only right we're going to just read till over here. So what is software quality assurance? The major aim of the software quality assurance process is to develop the high quality software product. Obviously, if there is an organization which is developing the software, then what will be the aim of that organization? The aim is to always develop a good quality software or the high quality software. What software quality assurance include? It includes reviewing and auditing the software products throughout the development life cycle to verify that they confirm to the explicit requirements and the implicit requirements such as applicable procedures and standards. So software quality assurance provides you what? It basically goes through, it basically includes the reviewing and the auditing part of the software. Means 
in whatever phase the software is, it is going to be audited by the software quality assurance team, whether it is following all the important standards and the procedures that needs to be followed in order to develop a high quality software. So that comes under your software quality assurance means to check whether the team which is developing the software is following all the applicable procedures and the standards that should be followed in order to develop any of the software. So that comes under your software quality assurance. We can also define it as it in another words, which is like SQA is the short form of your software quality standard. It is a planned, coordinated and systematic actions necessary to pro provide the adequate confidence that a software product confirms to establish technical requirements. Like all the specifications, specifications, all the standards are being followed and a product is being developed and that product is of good quality. If the software quality assurance team says that, then it is being considered as a good quality software. If any of the faults are being there, any of the standards are not being followed, then in that case, the software quality assurance team is going to play its role. So various members are there into the software quality assurance team. Software engineers are there, project managers are there, customers and the software quality assurance groups are involved in the software quality assurance activity. The role of the various groups in software quality assurance are as follows. We have got the software engineers. Obviously, they are associated with the development of the software, perform the testing of the software product and participated participate into the formal technical reviews. Whereas the software quality assurance group is doing what? They assist these engineers in developing the high quality product. They plan the quality assurance activities and report the result of the review. Obviously, there will be the different kind of the activities that are going to be performed in order to find out the quality of the software. So what this team is doing, this team is just going to make the plan and make and perform the different kind of the activities in order to assure that the good quality software is being produced. So that comes under your software quality assurance. I think this is good for today. If any of the problem is being there or you're facing, you can ask me. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. So we'll meet in our next session, which is, I think, going to be on 24th or 25th, right? Till no. then. This, yeah. everything we have read here, we are, there is a reference for this, you know, to read them in details. Yeah, I'll provide you with that, right? And if you wanted to check, it is also present into this PDF also that for reference purpose, you can follow all these different, different articles or the books or the. Okay. 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 Just download this PDF and start reading it or start studying it. Then you will be able to okay. just understand it and remember also. Fine. Yes. ma'am. Okay. Then we are just leaving for today and uh, let me just. Stop recording.